Hello guys, long time no see, it's been a while. A lot has changed in my life. Um, in a nutshell, I've moved to Bonn, Cologne. I'm now a master's student at the University of Cologne. I left Belarus, which is my home country, on the 1st of April 2022. And I think, I mean, given the current socio-political situation, I might not be coming back. I think I might do a separate video to tell you about my journey and all the changes in my life. Um, but what are we doing here today? Well, I know that my channel so far has been, I mean, the choice of topics has been super random. It's, it's just been a bunch of random stuff. And truth be told, <laughs> I think it's going to stay that way because because of all the changes in my life, I'm not going to monetize any content I do for at least the next two years, I think. So my hands are free to do whatever dodgy things they like. Um, yeah, so today I wanted to tell you about an extremely interesting thing that I learned in my language attrition class. So at university, we have this subject called language attrition. What is language attrition? Basically, it is the forgetting of a language you once knew very well. It may be a foreign language that you learned at school or at university or as a bilingual, maybe, um, in your childhood. But for some reason, you stopped using it and you're forgetting it or you have forgotten it. Um, it can also happen to your native language. That is a very interesting thing. Language attrition may happen to your native language as well. I mean, in the past, linguists used to believe that our native language has a special, you know, a very special status in our brains, which turns out not to be true because we can forget our native language, which is interesting and sad at the same time. One important note, Language attrition happens in the brain of a healthy individual. Okay, so it, it doesn't have anything to do with aphasia or uh, any degenerative processes in your brain. No, it's just, um, it's a natural phenomenon happening in a healthy brain. And now I need my notes. <laughs> So a question linguists have been asking themselves has been, is it actually easier to relearn, reintroduce a language you once knew and you once spoke, what you once knew well, will it be easier to relearn it after you have forgotten it, after you think you have forgotten it? Will it be easier to relearn it than to learn a completely new language. Put in other words, um, is there something left in your memory? Okay, it wasn't linguists who first posed this question. Those were cognitive psychologists. And before I explain the savings paradigm, we need a few terms. So you know that there's short-term memory and long-term memory, right? And if something gets into our long-term memory, then we kind of remember it for a long time. <laughs> but sometimes we do forget things after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years pass. We don't remember people's names or phone numbers or words of a language we once knew anymore. What do I mean when I say remember? Well, both in psychology and linguistics, we have two important terms to recall and to recognize. So when we start forgetting something, first, we stop recalling it. If we don't recall it, we can't produce it without help. We can recognize a word or someone's name. So when we see it, we're like, oh, yes, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I remember that. But if we're asked to you know, just produce it without any external help, um, we can't, so we can't recall it. The next stage is when we can't either 
recall it or recognize it. So even when we see something, a word, for example, a word in some language, we're like, ah, uh, no, I don't remember what that is. So we can neither recall nor recognize. And the question is, or for the psychologist, the cognitive psychologist, the question was, is there actually something left there in our brains? Something that can be retrieved or something that can be reintroduced and learned faster the second time around. Well, faster than new things. This one is probably one of the most famous experiments done by psychologists to test whether the savings effect actually works. What is the savings effect? Um, well, savings are those things that are probably left in our brains um, after we stop either um, recalling or recognizing an item. So is there something left, right? This is called the savings effect. Uh, and disclaimer, there is something. Okay, but at that time, I mean, when psychologists did those experiments, and in this particular experiment as well, they often used just random numbers and words. So linguists thought, huh, can we actually replicate the results for a natural language, something that has more context and something we do actually learn and forget? all the time. Are there savings left in our brain for words? So if a child or a teenager or an adult once learned a language and then stopped using it for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and this language has undergone language attrition, remember the term? Is there actually something left there? And can we retrieve it? And can this language be reintroduced easier than um, a completely new language or new words in the same language. Another disclaimer. Yes, there is. Well, it's not a disclaimer, actually, because I'm finishing this video and <laughs> I'm just going to tell you the results and that's it. OK, so um, if you'd like to find out more and read the experiments, read about the experiments yourself, uh, you can have a look at uh, these two publications. If not, uh, I'm going to tell you the results anyway. And the results are that, yes, indeed, even if you think you have forgotten a word completely, but you once knew it, that's important. You once knew it, you, you once could use it, you once could um, speak that language and use that exact word, even after a few decades, it will be easier for you to reintroduce that word again and kind of relearn it rather than learn new words. Because experiments have shown that people relearn old words twice as successfully as new words. There are many factors that affect this ability to retrieve what you once knew, of course. Um, among them are how long you were exposed to that language back then. Like, for how many years did you learn it or did you speak it? What proficiency you achieved back then? So how proficient you were in that language? How much is still left in your memory today? The more is left, the easier it will be. How much time has passed? Is it 10 years, 20 or 30? How old you are now? Because, you know, we all know that the older you are, the more difficult it becomes to learn new things. Um, that's a sad fact. But the most important thing is that, yes, it is indeed easier. You might have noticed I've been talking about words, vocabulary. And you might now ask, how about grammar? Grammatical rules? And how about pronunciation? Well, experiments have shown that, again, if you spoke a language, especially as a child, especially as a really um, young child, a really young age, 
it will at least be easier for you to recognize sounds in a language um, because there's this well critical period hypothesis and well basically the younger you are when you're first when you're first exposed to a language um, the more flexible your mind is and you will be able to recognize the sounds of that language even later in life even when you are an adult and even when you if you haven't used this language for for decades um, same for grammatical rules really again it is easier to reintroduce them if you once spoke that language and if you once knew those rules and knew how to use them to sum it up experiments show that you if you have learned something once, it is never forgotten completely. It is somewhere there, deep in your brain, and you can retrieve it. And it is easier to retrieve it than learn new stuff. Good news, right? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment. If you'd like to see similar videos in the future, I can't promise. <laughs> I've already told you this channel is a bunch of random stuff that I'm interested in, but thank you for staying with me <laughs> and thank you for liking it. Mm. Yeah, see you.